Hello there, welcome to the October 2020 applied paper here, we're looking at question 2. Jerry is studying visibility for Camborn using the large data set June 1987. The table below contains two extracts from the large data set. It shows the daily maximum relative humidity and the daily mean visibility. Given that daily mean visibility is given to the nearest 100, write down the range of distances in metres that correspond to the recorded value 0 for the daily mean visibility. We've got the summary statistics here, and it says on the bottom here, the units for daily mean visibility are deliberately omitted. So I'm thinking there, that might have something to do with the answer. What is the units for daily mean visibility? That is in decameters, or tens of metres. So, if this value of zero has been recorded to the nearest hundred, then that must mean that that data value is in between zero to fifty. But it's 0 to 50 decameters, and the answer wants it in meters, so therefore the answer to part A is going to be 0 meters to 500 meters. That's what 50 decameters is. Decameter is 10 meters, so if our data value is from 0 to 50 in meters, that's going to be 0 to 500. So not a, little, not a trick question exactly, but it's not the first most obvious answer. Let's move on to part B. Jerry drew the following scatter diagram in figure 2 and calculated some statistics using the June 1987 data for Camborne from the large data set. Jerry defines an outlier as a value that is more than 1.5 times the interquartile range above Q3 or more than 1.5 times the interquartile range below Q1. Part B is show that the point circled in the scatter diagram is an outlier for daily for visibility. So daily mean visibility, I would say that that data value there is about 5,300. So I've got to prove that it's going to be bigger than this uh, definition for an outlier. And it's probably going to be too high, so I need to go 1.5 times the interquartile range above Q3. At the moment, I am not given Q3, so let's work it out. Q3 is going to be Q1 add the interquartile range. So for visibility, that's going to be 2,700. And now I need to find out my outlier. My outlier kind of benchmark. That's going to be 2,700 add 1.5 times the interquartile range, 1,600. And you do that on your calculator and you get 5,100 metres. So therefore, or decameters rather, decameters. Um, so therefore, as 5,300 is above 5,100, this is an outlier. And there we are, that's the answer to part B. Let's just finish it off. There we are. So part C is interpret the correlation between the daily mean visibility and the daily maximum relative humidity. Well, I'll just write, I'll just say it out loud here. It's going to be a negative correlation, but that's not the only answer here. The interpretation is going to be as daily maximum relative humidity increases, daily mean visibility decreases, and there you are, that's your answer, as daily maximum relative humidity de increases, daily mean visibility decreases, and that's, that's negative correlation. And moving on to the final question, uh, Jerry drew the following scatter diagram, figure 3, using June 1987 data for Camborne from the large data set, but forgot to label the x-axis. Using your knowledge of the large data set, suggest which variable the x-axis on the scatter diagram represents. Well, it needs to be positively correlated with daily mean visibility. It's going to have lots of um, decimal values, so it's not integers, so it's nothing to do with cloud cover or anything like that. We know that's in octars, and that goes up to eight. Um, so it's going to be positively correlated with visibility. I would say something like hours of sunshine is going to be the answer to this one here. I would say daily total rainfall is a possibility, but I would probably say that that is negatively correlated with daily mean visibility. If it's raining, it's generally not clear, but if it's if it's sunny, then it's probably going to be quite visible as well. So therefore, I've got positive correlation there. So hours of sunshine is the answer to that question there. So there we are, that's the answer for question two. Let's now move on to question three.